Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Cameron. If you don't already know, I'm a senior finance major here at the University of Florida. And I'm here today with Danny, who's currently in a post back program here at UF. As you can tell by his polo, went to Miami undergrad. Uh, so he definitely has a lot of experience with that. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the differences between UF and Miami. So we were talking earlier, we understand a lot of the times people might be deciding between UF and Miami. Honestly, let's be real. If you get into UF, you're not gonna go to USF. It's just not an argument. But UF and Miami is a little bit closer as far as kind of um, the prestige, the academics. So it, I think it's a very valid uh, decision that could be pretty tough for a lot of students. So in today's video, we're just gonna kind of clear up some differences that we have already noticed between the yeah. two schools, because trust me, there are plenty and to hopefully just kind of provide you guys a little bit more insight into the lives of students at both schools. So with that being said, we'll get into the first subject and that is the social life. So we're here in Danny's apartment. I'm looking out at the social, which is one of the more popular bars here in Gainesville. And I think this is kind of one of the biggest differences between UF and Miami. UF is definitely a very traditional college town. Gainesville doesn't have much going on outside of UF. Um, so it's that traditional college experience. If you were to watch a movie about college, this is it. You're living it here in Gainesville, and Miami. I understand is a lot different. So you've lived in Miami your whole life. Can you mm -hmm. just explain a little bit more about kind of the vibe of the town? And the college? Yeah, I mean over there it's more of like it's a big city vibe, um, and like I feel like here in UF, it's like UF makes Gainesville. Whereas if you go to UM, UM does not make Miami like at all. If anything, UM is actually kind of like. A little outlier just because at UM you have a lot of like people from like the northeast and people in Miami are like me like we're like usually Hispanic Latin um that's kind of like the stereotype but it is true yeah um so it is just like a different like vibe it's like I said bigger everything also closes a lot later um yeah. I know here things close at like 2 a.m which for me like coming from Miami it was a huge like culture shock um, cause I got here and like, it was 2am, everything was closing and I'm like, all right, where are we going to next? Cause I thought it was just like the bar that I was right. at closed at too. And everybody was like, no, like everything closed at too. And I'm used to going out to like, you know, five, six in the morning and I'm like, oh, it's, it's two. I guess I got to call it a night. Yeah. So kind of um, going off of that, like UF is a lot of bars, so we don't have a lot of clubs. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously like some bars can be very busy and you're tight packed. It could feel like a club. Um, but it's a very different kind of vibe. It's it's just bars, um, college bars. Everyone in the bar is most likely in college or a mm -hmm. student. Um, whereas in Miami, I'm sure there's a much wider range of people. It's not, mm -hmm. not it's not necessarily just a bar. There's clubs. So you can kind of just explain kind of the different yeah. places you might go out in a night. In so like honestly, I didn't really go to like a quote unquote college bar until I got to UF. Um, Miami doesn't really have like the traditional college bars type thing. They do have one place called Sandbar. Every Thursday, Sandbar. That's just, you know, my input. Um, but besides that, like, the, there are more, it's more of, like, the, like, the bars there, they're a lot more, like, upscale. Okay. And even if they're not, like, a full-on, like, nightclub, like, your live and story, they are, like, they feel like you're in a club, even though it just is a bar, but they have, like, a nice little DJ. There's this place I go to. It's, it might not be too known, um, but it is getting popular. It's called Copper 29. That's, like, my favorite bar in Miami. Um, but it is like really small. It's kind of like imagine like salty dog, okay. but just like really really small, like a bougie salty dog. Okay. Um, but with that being said, though, it also is a lot more expensive to go out in right. Miami. Like going out in Miami is crazy expensive. I was lucky enough, and I'll admit it. I live with my parents, and so do a lot of people in Miami. So it's not like you know like a hidden secret or anything. Um, but living with my parents like did allow me to go out a lot more because it's like the money that I'm getting right. I either save it up or I go out. I don't have to pay rent or anything like that um, But I, I told you this earlier. It's like like what I could get for what was it like a day in Miami of going out? Would last me like a whole month in Gainesville um, So that's the biggest difference also like you said in Miami you get like a whole variety of people like sometimes I'll go out with like just like one friend or something and we go out to like some like bar in Wynwood and we don't really see anybody we know. We don't right. see people from college. It's like an older crowd. Um, whereas here in UF, it's like a much younger crowd. Yeah, I think it's kind of all about what you want out of your college. Experience. Yeah. So you want to feel like you're simply in a college town. You're living that, that movie, you know, Blue Mountain State, American Pie. Or do you want to kind of feel more independent? You're, you have that big city living. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a really big thing that you need to decide for what you want whether it's Miami or UF. 
You also mentioned the cost. Here in Gainesville, yeah. the cost of living is, is much more affordable. You know, not just at the bars where you might pay five dollars for cover. A just lot. With, with anything too. Yeah, drinks are cheap, but then also like housing. So, you know, if you want to live in a luxury apartment, uh, here in Gainesville, I lived in a one or I lived in a four bedroom, four bath apartment for two years, and it cost me eight hundred and fifty dollars to have my own bedroom, my own bathroom. It came fully furnished. It was a very nice place. What do you think that would cost in Miami? Like, if you want to get, like, a luxury, I mean, the scale of luxury there is also really different because it's just right. a bigger city in terms of, you know, building and, and buildings and skyscraper. But, like, if you want, like, a one-bedroom, like, just normal one-bedroom, like, you'll be lucky to get something for 1700 And this is, like, talking about lower end. Okay. You know, if you want something really bougie, you want, like, the nicest thing, you're going to be paying, like, $2,000 for a single, 3000 for a single, um, obviously, if you're a student, you could kind of find areas around UM where it is like a lot cheaper. Um, but if you want like that true bougie Miami life of like living in Brickell, living like near downtown, it is going to be a lot more expensive. Um, and you also have to like, like keep in mind that you, you're either going to have to be like Ubering every day to campus or driving or taking the metro. I know here at UF, everything is kind of like closer. Yeah. Um, and it is with walking distance in Miami, like you do have to invest in a car if you want to get around. If not, you're just gonna be spending money on Uber all the time. Yeah, so the, the expenses kind of just pile up. So like here in Gainesville, I've never had my car up at school. I had a bike for a while, but mm -hmm. honestly, you can get away with just walking. Yeah. You know, we're, like I said, yeah. we're looking out at a bar right now. Anytime you could go anywhere, it's definitely within walking distance. Um, so that also saves a lot of money. So it's really kind of considering your own financial situation and you know, because it's not just the cost of tuition at Miami, which of course, you know, we don't even really need to talk about. It's way more expensive than UF, um, but it's really just kind of those other compounding things, you know. Yeah. The apartment's more expensive, then you have to bring a car. Exactly, yeah. You're paying more for Ubers, so it really just adds up. So it really, again, all depends kind of on your own, you know, financial situation. It's definitely doable. You mentioned earlier kind of scholarships mm. and financial aid that's available to students. Um, so definitely recommend checking that out. But that's a really big thing to consider between the two schools is kind of the cost of living between Gainesville and Miami. Yeah, and also, like I said, I'm from Miami. Um, so I did live at home during college and my parents were really, really chill. So I didn't have like any weird like things. You know, I had parties at my place like every now and then, um, nothing crazy. Um, but living at home definitely saved me a bunch of money. Yeah. Like being realistic, like I don't think I could live alone in Miami. Okay. Um, just because it's not worth it. And like a lot of people in Miami, they like, like I said, they live with their parents if you're from Miami because you do want to save as much money as possible, especially when you're like our age, you know, we're in our younger 20s. Um, we just don't have that type of money yeah. yet to be, you know. Yeah, and it's nice here. to hear it's not like a, a stereotype or a seen as a bad thing to live with your, with your parents. No, I no, think, no, no. You know, really in all aspects of life, like it's not a bad thing to live with your parents and to wait until you are financially able yeah. uh, to get in a situation where you can pay for yourself, your, your own housing. So if you're given the opportunity to do that, save some money, I think it's definitely a great thing to do. No, what I will say too, which is kind of funny, Miami, um, as I've told you before, has like a huge like flex culture. So what you will see is people in their thirties, right? They drive like a BMW M5. This is like, you know, an $80,000 car, but they still live with their parents. Um, so, you know, it is a little funny seeing these memes and seeing social right. media, how people live. Like, like Miami has its own like lifestyle where it's like people try to flex everything that they have, like all this money, mm -hmm. um, but they still live with their parents. Yeah, I see because, all, you know, <laughs> I get way too many uh, Snapchat stories of people on yachts and I don't think yeah, they yeah. own them. So. Yeah, no, people, people like, they like to pretend like they own the yachts and stuff, but no, you just like charter a yacht and usually you just do it like, you know, once every blue moon when you can afford it. So. Perfect. So I think that covers kind of the social situation and kind of the cost of living between the two schools. So hopefully that kind of clears some things up from that respect. Now we're going to talk about the academics. So like we said before, both schools are very good. Definitely the top two schools in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess kind of if you could talk about some of the differences as far as class size. So I know at UF, because we have a much larger population of students, I think it's 35 grand undergrad, 53 everybody. Um, UM, I think you said was 10 to 12,000, yeah, 10, so definitely 12, yeah. different. Kind of what was your experience, class size? Do you still think you got exactly like what you were looking for and you learned mm -hmm. what you came to school to learn? Yeah, so my major specifically, like I kind of got lucky, I guess. Um, like in my major, like it, was, it wasn't too many of us, um, but like the lecture halls that I did have that were like a lot of people, it's like 
the first like what do you call it, like the level 100 classes yeah um they were like a lot bigger um and then as you like you know get more specific into your major into your classes the class size like does decrease um now there were classes that were like in the middle for example where it's like you have like maybe 40 or 30 students um, I would say that's like mid range and like you do get really close to your professors, which is like kind of yeah, nice again true. It really depends on your major and what you're right. studying um, But that was kind of like my experience like, you know, you start out with a bunch of people and then you narrow down Right, so UF is definitely a much bigger school So you're not really gonna have those personal relationships with your professors naturally um, You know just even going to class isn't gonna get them to know your name um, especially in those earlier classes, your freshman, sophomore year, when they're kind of the core classes, the gen eds. Um, later on in your career, like for myself this last year as a senior, all of my classes were upper level finance electives. Um, so there is a class size of probably 20 to 25. So, you know, you still might have your teacher know your name, but it's not as natural. I mean, most of the time they're just lecturing to you. Yeah. It's not as much of a interaction take guess, situation, yeah. which is something, you know, I think is probably a little different at the smaller schools. So that again is something to consider kind of what is your learning style? Do you need more one-on-one -on -one attention? Um, if that's the case, you know, a small school might be better. Um, UF is definitely not that. Um, but I think we can both agree, both are very well respected. Yeah, they are, they are. Nationally known, so you don't have to worry about, you know, applying to a job in New York City and the recruiter not ever hearing of yeah. the school. Um, so I think that's not really a difference. Both schools are, you know, top level. But they are very like, equal they do have a lot of good programs good professors respected professors right um so it just really you know depends on what you make out of it yeah and kind of going into the next category of opportunities that the schools present um i think like kind of going off of that last aspect is you know the brand recognition everybody knows miami they know the you you know whether it's from football or not it's definitely known all throughout the country the same goes for uf go gators and so I think that really has a major oh, impact. Yeah. Um, as far as like career opportunities, you know, you go to UM, you're in Miami, you're in one of the biggest cities in the nation. So that also offers a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about, I know you mentioned kind of being, you know, on the athletic training staff, yeah. a lot of, yeah, of course, teams, yeah. kind of the opportunities that that presents being in a city mm -hmm. like Miami. So my undergrad uh, degree was actually in athletic training. So I worked in the training room with all the sports teams and stuff. And even there, like I did network a lot and I was able to meet a lot of different people and professionals. And obviously now I'm here at UF kind of like switching into medicine, something a little bit different. Um, but if I were to stay in Miami, I could have definitely, you know, had a connection that could have landed me a job. Um, but it's just because of the networking. So, you know, no matter where you are, you definitely just want to like network right. and kind of learn. I always say that people, even people that are like really shy, should kind of learn how to be social in a way that like kind of benefits to them. Like you don't have to like, you know, be an extrovert or anything, but at least be social to the point where you can make connections um, because that's really going to help you. You can go to Miami, but if you don't make connections, if you don't network, even though you have all these opportunities around you, you're in a really busy city. Yeah. Um, you know, you have people coming in from all over the world. You have people coming in from New York, LA into this one city, but if you just stay quiet, you don't do anything about it. You just stay in your room all day you're not gonna get anything out of it. Right. So it really comes down to you to take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, I think that's really important. That's something I talk about all the time yeah. on this channel with respect to applying for internships and jobs. It's like, at the end of the day, it's one thing to go to a school, but networking is the most important aspect. It doesn't matter what your GPA is if you don't go out and network. And I think that is really just a testament to it. You could be in a city with a million different opportunities, but if you're not putting yourself out there, it's gonna make a challenge. Exactly. But going off of that, Gainesville isn't really a, a, a social hub of Florida. It's yeah. not, no one's talking about how Gainesville is going to be the next New York City of the South, yeah. uh, like Miami. Um, so the opportunities in Gainesville aren't really there. It's definitely the connections through kind of other UF grads that is very helpful going to UF. But it's not like a lot of people aspire to just stay in Gainesville the rest of their careers. Um, so I think that's another really important thing to consider. You know, if you're in Miami, you can go to school and then also have an internship at the same time. Gainesville is definitely a college town, so there's not a lot of, you know, business opportunities in the city uh, to pursue while you're actually here. You're gonna have to wait until it's the summer or after graduation to kind of pursue a different city and other internships. So with all of that being said, that's gonna wrap up the video. I hope this video helps clear up some ideas and notions that you had between the two schools. Like I said before, they are very different, but at the same time, there's a lot of similarities. Like we said, 
Academics at both schools are very great. Social life at both schools is very important, although very different. Um, so it's kind of just, again, what works best for your own situation, both financially and what you're looking for after graduation. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said before, definitely check out Danny's channel. He gets great insight into his life. Also, if you're really interested in Miami, you can scroll back down. He made tons of videos. Yeah, literally any, any video about UM, you can find <laughs> it on my channel. Like anything, day in the life, frat midday, sorority midday, just anything you want to know about UM, you can check it out on my channel. You can also send me a DM and I'll be more than happy to help. He's definitely the guy to go to for anything about Miami. I'm the guy for UF. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.